Okay, so welcome to this second part of this presentation on Jakarta E. Uh, I've called it a closer look at Jakarta E10. And uh, I'm Ivar Grimstad, the Jakarta E developer advocate at Eclipse Foundation. And uh, I uh, here, here's my Twitter, LinkedIn, and, and GitHub information. If you want to connect, please do. And uh, I'm involved in a bunch of these open source initiatives and uh of course mostly with the Eclipse Foundation and and, uh, and Jakarta EE. So Jakarta 901 as Tanya mentioned and, and she left it there sort of so that's where we start. Uh, 901 was uh, launched uh, earlier this year uh, and uh, it had uh, Java SE 11 support and with that we mean that you could actually run the TCK on SE11. The, the APIs themselves are compiled to Java 8, and it doesn't really matter for the end user what, what kind of compilation level you compile your APIs to because it will run. That's the backwards compatibility of Java. So, But the, what it means is that the vendors could verify the product on 11. And uh, as Tanya also mentioned, we have these three focus areas to lower the entry barriers, to, uh, that basically means remove old stuff, uh, make it a, a platform for innovation, uh, meaning we want to kind of have a, have a good starting point to start with the work for uh, Jakarta E10 and, and further. And we wanted to make the migration easy, and, and the migration is all about the Java X to Jakarta namespace. And You've probably heard of this, and this is kind of the major thing. And it's actually the only thing that was delivered in 9 and 9 1 was the change to Jakarta namespace. And that's where I'll, I'll put the efforts on the demo here. So I'll, I'll show you how to cope with this namespace change and, and some different ways of doing it. And uh, uh, what I will do is to take a simple application running on Glassfish 5.1 uh that is uh, on jakarta 8 and i'll convert it to a version running on glassfish uh, 62 uh 621 actually uh, and i'll explain why afterwards and uh, uh that runs on, on jakarta 9 901 and um as every developer uh, i like to do things as simple as possible and when i want to display hello world of course, I ha have to have a, a, a uh, application that at least has uh, some sort of uh, layering and uh, separation around here. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm using the, a database to store my message. And, and through this uh, uh, database, I'm, I'm using a Jakarta Persistence repository to retrieve the data from the database. And of course, I need transaction support. So I'm using Jakarta Enterprise Beans or EJB, as they used to be called, uh, to, to call the repository. And I have a REST endpoint implemented with Jakarta REST, producing a JSON message uh, saying uh, how to Jakarta EE. And I also spice it up a little by adding a CDI extension. Not everybody has this in the application, but if you have, uh, it's nice to know uh, what you have to think about when migrating as well. And, and this CDI extension is, is uh, just giving a nice message to the administrator when they start up the application. So uh, let's go and look at the uh, code for this application. First of all, I'll just take you through the uh, uh, POM file here. And uh, what I have here is uh, a uh, Jakarta E version 8. I'm comp compiling it to uh, uh, Java SE 8. Uh, I'm actually using uh, Java 17 underneath there, but uh, but I'm running Glassfish on 8, and I'm uh, compiling everything to 8, so we won't have any issues there. Um, to look at the code, it is a typical uh, Jakarta REST application, uh, and this is all the configuration I, I really need. And uh, it has this uh, simple uh, hello uh, resource. Uh, 
that uh, produces the uh, the uh, JSON output for the endpoint. And, and as you can see, it's it's if you, if we're used to using Spring or or uh, older versions of, of Jakari, it's 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 pretty nice and and a little is uh, verbosity uh, in in it. So so it's. It's pretty simple. It's a HTTP GET and it produces JSON. That's kind of what I say, say, tells it to do. And and then I use this EJB, which I, I could have used a, a regular inject here as well. Uh, and this EJB is also very simple. You can see it has a stateless annotation. That's what makes it an EJB. And uh, I'm just calling the repository, get, getting the first one. And if there are none, uh, I'll just uh, print uh, undefined. And the repository is, or uh, the greeting uh, message here, is a uh, persistent entity and uh, it gets stuff from the greetings table and it has uh, three columns here. I'm using two of them. And the repository class is um, uh, inheriting the scope from, from the calling class. Uh, I'm using the uh, Jakarta persistence context, and uh, I'm doing a uh, criteria uh, language here to uh, do the actual select, where I just say uh, select all from from this uh, table. And if you also noticed, I had this at Duke's annotation here, and that is my own custom annotation. I've just defined it here, uh, and. Uh, I have this uh, CDI extension that looks for this Duke's annotation. And if it finds it uh, when it processes annotations, it will print the message in the log file. So, so that, that's what uh, all this uh, does, but uh, it's, it's a simple CDI extension and uh, it just prints a log message. So let's take this uh, application here and uh, uh, just run it on on uh, Glassfish 5 to uh, verify that it, that it works. I have uh, Glassfish 5 running here. So I'll just add my artifact to this one. I'll just take it as it is. There we go. And uh, uh, deploy it. So my ID here and my servers have been sleeping a little bit while we were uh, listening to the other part of the presentation. But you can see it's kind of waking up and doing its build stuff now. And uh, as we go, we are uh, going to see that it will uh, uh, print a message hi there in the log. And, and this comes from the CDI extension I just showed you here. So it works, at least uh, in the log file. and. Uh, I'll go here, and uh, I have uh, Glassfish 5.1 running here on, on my on port 8082. So I go to the complete Duke hello endpoint, and you can see it says, how did you call 88? So, so at least the, the application works. That's verified. So what I'll do now is to uh, take this application and uh, convert it to uh, Jakari uh, 9 of 1. And the first thing I'll, I'll do there is I'll change the version to uh, none of one. And, and we, we talked a little bit about Java versions. What I also will do is actually to take this one and compile it to uh, with uh, Java 17, just to show that it works. And, and that is the reason why I'm using Glassfish 621, because that one uh, it is uh, running with uh, without problems on 17. 6.2.0, not so much. So so from 6.2.1 and, and further, you, you can run on 17. Now, Chikari 9 is not, uh, it, it's not tested with the TCK to run on, on 17 because the TCK is limited to 11, but uh, you get the point. So I've upgraded it to uh, 9.1 and I've uh, done the Java version. I don't really need to do the Java version. I just do it because uh, I, I like to live a little bit on the edge when I do these demos. So I'm, I'm just updating the project now. And what you'll see is that I'm starting to get compilation errors. So, so what I'll do there is, is I'll, I'll do the manual uh, approach first. And I'll just use the IDE here to 
to uh, uh, fix it for me. And uh, uh, you, you can see some of the um, some of these um, imports uh, are, are fixing themselves by the ID. Some of them have name complex. So you have to select the proper one. That's why you, you cannot do a, a a kind of mindless search and replace without thinking. You, you need to know that you don't replace or change anything uh, that shouldn't be. But uh, but mostly it's it's about uh, search and replace uh, Jakarta with uh, uh, Java. As you can see here, I, I can just write Jakarta resistance and, and it will, it will compile. Let's uh, just go through all of these. And uh, as you see, there are some name conflicts here and there, uh, but uh, just select the, the proper, proper one. The last one we just scoped. There you go. So, so there I've, I've fixed all the uh, uh, the imports, and and this you can script this uh, or 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 certain place it. So it's it's fairly easy. What I also need to think about is that I I do have some uh, configuration files, and and I do uh, use some XML namespaces and. Uh, if you remember, I was using the uh, the Jakarta persistence and injecting the uh, persistence context, and that comes from here. So, so it's defined here in in this persistent XML file, and and this one has uh, the Jakarta persistence version two to one, which is Jakarta E eight. What I want to do is to uh, upgrade this one to three, but then uh, the namespace has changed. These are the old ones for for uh, JCP. So, so I, I want to change this one to uh, Jakarta. And we've done it simple. So, so, so you only have to uh, to change everything, uh, the, the, uh, the first part of the URL here. The, uh, the, the rest is kept as it is. You can see here, jcp.org has to be replaced by, by Jakarta. The, and, and also mind, it, it only works for HTTPS. I'll, I'll just replace this one. And the, the last thing is that these files or the, the schemas here have a uh, uh, have the version number in the file name. So, so you're, you're absolutely sure that you get the, the correct one. So the, the, the XML schemas, and, and there may be other configuration files than the uh, persistent XML. You may have some web XML or application XML or, or, or depends on your application. So, so you need to go through these uh, XML namespaces and change them. Now, in, in some cases, you don't need, you don't have to use the uh, namespaces, but it's a good thing because then you'll you'll get code completion uh, when you use them, and and that brings us to another thing. You can see here, uh, the properties we're using are using Java X. So these should be changed to Jakarta as well. And here you can see I, I get the code completion help from from using the, the proper namespace. So, so I'll, I'll just change these two properties. It, it's not necessarily that you do have these kind of properties, but if you do, you uh, will need to change them from uh, Java X to Jakarta. And the last thing I need to do is, if you remember the CDI extension, the Dukes extension here, that is configured with a bootstrapping file um, under the services, uh, and and it has this um, uh, contains the the uh, extension class, and and it it's called uh, let me just you see it's called Javax Enterprise Inject SBI extension. So what I need to do here is to rename this file to you probably guessed it by now Jakarta Enterprise. So you can see it's, it's, it's all about changing Java X to, to Jakarta. And you can see this was, I mean, it, there are a few steps I have to do here, but it's fairly simple uh, anyway. So let, let's see if this one runs on uh, Glassfish uh, uh, 6. So, so I'll add the artifact here and the complete dick. Let's hope it works. Go in there and I'll deploy it. Look at the uh, the log file here. Let's see if it writes anything. It's uh, it's uh, building here. 
it's, it's finished and you can see it it's deploying here and it's running uh, out the the message saying uh, hi there to the uh, the administrator so so everything seems to be working let's go and uh, look at the um, the uh, the actual endpoint and here I'm running uh, glassfish uh, 62 on uh, on port 8080 and we'll see it says the message but there is one thing it says hello to eight. Well, that's not what, it, what we're running. We wanted to say hello to, to nine. And, and uh, that is uh, what it's getting from the database. So let, let's also change what the, um, what the database uh, contains. So I'll do a select there from greeting. There you go. If it finds it. So you can see uh, my database has one row in it. It, it says uh, hello to uh, Jakarta 8. So let's change this one to, uh, oh, it says it's read only, not introspected. Okay, so this is the demo ghost coming. See if we can uh, figure out how to do this. Well, it won't let me uh, do the changes there. So um, let's um, just skip that part of the demo. Just imagine that it's saying hello to uh, 9 of 1. But, th but that is kind of the, 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 uh, the last thing you also need to remember when you do these changes. So, so what I did here was to update the, the uh, dependencies in the POM file. I also upgraded the Java version. That's not necessarily but you can do it. Uh, I fixed the imports. I, I fixed all the XML schema namespaces. And I fixed the properties that were prefixed with Java X and only those that are kind of within the J Jakarta domain. I renamed the bootstrapping files for the CDI extension. And also I did a verification of the data and dynamic content. And, and uh, th that was kind of the database message. And for me, it's just a, a dumb message, but it uh, could have been that you were concatenating some strings from the database to create some properties and they had a Java X prefix. So that is uh, something you, you probably need to remember when you do the migration. So it's not, not only code, but it's also the, uh, the configuration files, the uh, namespaces and dynamic data, and that's easy to forget, but it's also easy to fix. But what if you don't have the source code and you want to do this thing anyway? And um, I, uh, like I showed here in my demo, I had all the, the code in front of me and I could do the, uh, the migration in the source. What if you have some code that you're not having the source available? Well, then you have the transformation option. And there are two tools out there. Uh, that's the Eclipse Transformer, and it's the Apache Tomcat migration tool. And I'll demo both of these to, to show you uh, how, how to do that. And I'll just sh uh, shut down the, the um, this window here. I have this uh, Transformer Duke application here. And uh, this one is uh, running uh, with uh, it's, it's on Jakarta E8. It, it, it is an exact copy of the one, uh, the, the, uh, the one I, I just showed you. So I, I won't go through all the code here, but you can trust me. It, it, it is the exact same copy. I have the, um, the uh, you can see the, the uh, CDI extension and I have the XML uh, file here. I've removed the namespace since uh, uh, none of these uh, transformers uh, support the uh, the XML schemas. And not all the application servers are that picky on it either. So it depends on, on, on your runtime. Let's go and, and, and uh, look at this. So I, I do have uh, a uh, downloaded both of these to my, my uh, folder here and uh, if, if I look at the Eclipse Transformer, what I get there, you typically download a zip file and you unzip it. And, and what you get there is a jar. And, and I can run this one by typing java-jar uh, or Eclipse Transformer. 
and it will, it will give me some uh, help on how to use it. The, the other option, the, uh, the uh, Tomcat migration tool, uh, is also download a zip file and, and uh, you get a readme file here. Uh, so so it uh, gives you some uh, usage information, how you can use it, etc. And also, uh, what it has here in is a, uh, a shell script you can use. So I can just run a migrate and it will say, uh, give me some uh, some options how to use it. And the, the thing to to notify here is the profile input that you, if you want to do all the uh, Jakarta uh, Unity UCE profile. Let's uh, use this. Uh, I'll just uh, just uh, build my transformer duke first. Uh, so, so we have a binary to uh, to use for the transformation. So uh, in, in the target folder here now, I have the transformer duke and um, the, the uh, as, as we looked at the code, the transformer duke is, um, is, um, uh, is in the Jakarta, the uh, Java namespace. Uh, and and we, can, we can look at it uh, here and see that uh, it, it has the JavaX imports. Let's uh, transform this one using the Eclipse transformer. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, quickly here, you can see I'm, I'm calling the uh, java-jar and I'm, I'm calling this uh, transformer in the downloads folder. And I'm giving the input with transformer duke.war and an output called uh, transformer duke eclipse.war. So you can see here it, it uh, transformed 23 uh, resources. And, and I now have the transformer duke eclipse war. I'll, I'll just um, unzip this one to um, a folder called eclipse here. And uh, if we look at it in, in the target folder, you can see that it now has the uh, transformation done. It takes the war file, the bytecode, transforms it uh, to, to the correct uh, correct um, uh, classes. And, and, and if you also look at the um, The uh, CDI extension bootstrapping file has the in the original it calls Java X. In the uh, uh, transferred one, you can see it's transferred the, the file name to to uh, Jakarta Enterprise, and it, it contains uh, my file. What it doesn't do is the properties. So so you you will have a pro, uh, have to go through the uh, properties and fix those and, and that could be a problem. So but that is probably something that will be addressed in a later versions of the transformer. Let's then uh, run the um, the uh, the uh, Tomcat tool. Uh, let's also take these. Oh, sorry, let's see if I have it in history. So there you can see I'm running the uh, migrate script there. I'm, I'm using the EE profile in order to transform all of them. And I'm not saying transform it to this Apache war. And here also it's, it's uh, really fast and and they all run on 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 17. And uh, actually something I, I learned today, I don't know if you know it, but th this is this is Eclipse Tamarin. It's a, it's the Java runtime from Eclipse Foundation. And if you look at Tamarin, that is actually an, an anagram for runtime. I learned that today. That's pretty cool. But not a part of this um, uh, demo, uh, this presentation. So let's untip this one. Uh, just uh, look at it first. You can see it, it has produced the Apache war. Let's say the transformer, transformer Duke Apache war to Apache here. And let's look at uh, how this one uh, goes. So you can see all the the, um, the 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 classes here have been transformed with uh, Jakarta namespace. 
the uh, uh, bootstrapping file has been transformed. And this one actually also takes the properties. So at, at this given moment, the, the Apache tool is actually better than the Eclipse one, but um, uh, they're probably coming with some other versions uh, for the uh, Eclipse transformer as well. Some of the vendors also have this tool built in their runtime. So you can drop a Java X based or a Jakarta based application into, uh, for example, Wildfly, and it, it will run either way. Third option, what if I uh, want to do it manually, but I don't want to do it manually? Well, luckily, uh, you can do it uh, using your uh, IDE. And uh, I'll demo this here. Uh, with, with the uh, Transformer Duke, uh, uh, as you know, it, it's, it's in the, uh, the uh, Java X namespace. What I can do here is to use the, the uh, refactor and then choose migrate. And here, among other things, I have Java E to Jakarta E, and I'll just choose uh, the Transformer Duke module, and I'll run the uh, the uh, migration for me. And uh, so, so uh, what you'll see here is that oh, uh, there's one thing you need to do before that I didn't do. Uh, in order for this one to work, you actually have to first add the dependency for the one you're migrating to. So I'll just uh, add uh, none of one here. Then I'll, I'll do the, uh, the migration again. There you go. go to the mic. Well, if you're using IntelliJ and you can't find this option, uh, it's because you have to run a early access uh, currently. It isn't also supported in uh, in, in the uh, the regular version, so you need to to choose the the um, early access version. So and uh, so now we should see that uh, all of these classes have been transformed to Jakarta. And in order for this to to, to compile, uh, that's where uh, this ID is a little bit stupid, but uh, you have to reload the project. Well, so there it compiles. Uh, this one, the migration does not do the um, the uh, bootstrapping files or the uh, NetSuite properties. It, it is some some help on the way. So w why should I even care about the namespace? What if I'm not using uh, Jakarta E or think I'm not using Jakarta E at all? Why, why, why bother? Well, if you're using Spring Framework, uh, you probably remember from uh, uh, Jurgen Holler's blog that uh, Spring 6 will be based on Java 17 and Jakarta E9. So if you're using Spring, uh, you're probably using some Jakarta namespaced uh, annotations or classes directly, such as uh, bean validation or uh, maybe uh, persistence or, or something using pretty uh, directly, you're probably running it on, on Tomcat or Jetty or, or something, and they're going to the new namespace. So you, you've got to do it in order to be able to run your applications. Uh, you have some time to do this because Spring 6 isn't coming until uh, end of next year. But if you look at this uh, commit here in the uh, Spring Framework uh, GitHub, uh, they're doing the the changes now. So, so they've uh, they've done this massive commit where, where they change like 1,200 files, moving to newer versions of uh, of uh, Jakarta e APIs. And if if they can do it, uh, you can do it. So, it, as I said, if you're using Spring, uh, you're using Jakarta e underneath. If you're using Jetty or Tomcat. They're already moved to the new namespace. So if you want to follow their upgrades, uh, you need to change. If you're using Hibernate for your persistence, they also support the Jakarta namespace. So there's really no reason to linger around. It's just to go for it. That was 901. Let's look a little bit ahead. And what comes after 901? Well, of course, it's 10. 
and 10 is coming in uh, Q1 2022. This is a pr preliminary date, but that's what we're aiming for. Uh, you remember this uh, figure from uh, Tanya's uh, presentation. We're currently in the development and producing milestones phase. So uh, very soon now, the specification will start uh, submitting for release reviews. Uh, and uh, the uh, relevant final specification of the platform and the profiles uh, is planned for Q1. The reason why we want to have the release review started now in October is that uh, from experience, there are some dependencies between them and we just want to have it started. So we have a, a couple of months to, to wrap it all up and, and uh, get it shipped in Q1. And Jakarta E10 uh, looks like this. Uh, all the blue ones are the ones that are updated. I could have given a, a different color for the major updates, but you can see it if it has a dot zero after it, it means it's it's a major update and they, they potentially have some breaking changes. Uh, if it's a dot one release, it uh, means that they're just doing some smaller updates and it's backwards compatible. But you can see there are pretty many that are a dot zero release. So so they will have uh, breaking changes. The gray ones are not updated in this release. They stay as they were for uh, 9 of 1. And there are a couple of new ones, uh, config and uh, a new uh, lighter version of CDI. If we take away those at the end here that are uh, the more enterprisey focused, uh, we can look at uh, how the, the Jakarta E10 web profile lo will look like. And you can see there are lots of new things uh, coming here as well, uh, especially around uh, serverless and faces. Uh, they're doing uh, major updates. Security also has a major update. So there are new things coming uh, that will uh, benefit you if you're using server technologies, for example. But if we take away all these that are kind of more uh, web focused and just look at the ones that are uh, targeting uh, uh, RESTful endpoints or um, uh, microservices, if you like. You can see uh, this is the new profile we're uh, proposing or uh, will uh, deliver this time. And then this is the Jakarta E10 core profile. Uh, core profile may not be delivered the same time as the uh, platform and the web profile, uh, but will follow shortly and be uh, within the time frame of 10. But uh, it, it kind of depends on, on uh, CDI Lite and uh, potentially config if they are included. I've, I've added a star on config because it may be that the first version of core profile will be without config since that project uh, may not be able to deliver uh, in order to, to reach the timeline for, to, for a core profile. So the, the, the key thing with Jakarta core profile is to target smaller runtimes. And why do we do that? Well, if we do uh, the smaller set of specifications, we have potentially these uh, Helodon, Quarkus, Micronaut uh, as potential uh, Jakarta E compatible products. Uh, that's not possible today because they don't implement the uh, web uh, features uh, of the web profile, but they implement lots of the stuff that will be um, part of the core profile. So that's kind of the, the main goal of core profile. It's also uh, very kind of uh, similar to the base APIs that micro profile is uh, relying upon. So it will also enable the microprofile compatible applications to also be Jakarta E compatible. Let's look at some of the specifications and start with the new one, uh, config. And uh, Jakarta config will uh, provide portable configurations from environment diverse sources. And you can find it on Jakarta E slash specifications slash config. And you probably are wondering what's the difference from uh, microprofile config well potentially there are no differences because uh, what we're doing is to standardize microprofile config under the jakarta e umbrella so uh, uh, microprofile config will uh, most likely uh, go away and be replaced by jakarta config 
and and uh, uh, one of the things that uh, Carter Config will provide that MicroProfile Config provides for you is uh, these default configuration sources. Uh, they 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 are not done defining how they want to do it, but uh, I, I don't see that they will do anything different than this. So, so you you can have these kind of configuration sources that override each other. Let's look at uh, uh, CDI Lite. And CDI Lite is uh, designed around the concept to work in more restricted environments. You can find more about it on Jakarta slash specification slash CDI. It's part of CDI 4.0, and it will be a subset of, um, of, of CDI. So it's, it's the same project, but uh, it will be um, uh, uh, smaller and the, the key thing with CDI Lite is to move the dynamic features of CDI. So the example I showed in the demo with the CDI extensions, that will probably not work in CDI Lite. And that means that it's just it's it's not until runtime that you know what's going to, to kick in. And uh, they're adding a new extension API so it's possible to, to know beforehand at compile time what extensions are there uh, and also, uh, in order to to make this work, they're also changing the Beans XML behavior to to change the defaults there, uh, to be able to use technologies like RAL VM to uh, produce native images and ahead of time compilation, to 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 discover things at compile time rather than at runtime. And that's the key thing with uh, CDI Lite. We got a RESTful web services. And uh, that's uh, uh, the REST uh, endpoints. Uh, they, they will update the API with uh, some user requested features. Uh, they will maintain backwards compatibility. So um, it, it, they were planning for a 4.0 release, but uh, it will be a 3.1. You can find it on specification slash RESTful WS. Uh, one thing they uh, want to do here is to replace the add context with the add inject. Since they're not doing any backwards, I think they they will uh, deprecate context, uh, make inject available, and in the next version, remove that context. They also want to uh, add some other uh, support, like uh, multi-part uh, support, and uh, also some Java SE uh, things. The JSON specifications are dot one releases, uh, they are just doing uh, smaller changes uh, requested by users to make life easier for programmers. The, uh, uh, the gray ones, annotations, interceptors, and dependency injection uh, will stay as they are. There are no changes planned. I'm not going to go through all the web profile, but I want to go through one of them, uh, and that's uh, security 3.0. And uh, since we're in Switzerland and the, the home of secure banking, security is probably interesting for you. Uh, so you, you know that your chocolate is secure in, in your bank box uh, with uh, Jakarta Security doing it for you. And uh, the, the kind of the, uh, the theme of Jakarta Security is to add features and involve uh, the API. And you can find everything about it on jakarta.de slash specifications slash security. Uh, these are the things they are uh, planning to add, and that is additional authentication mechanisms. So, so they want to have support for client certifications and digests, uh, OpenID Connect and OAuth 2. They also uh, want to extend the authentication mechanism uh, support that is there today. So you can have one authentication mechanism per URL uh, that, that can, can make your application more flexible. Today, it's, it's I think it's per application. So you kind of do it per URL within an application. So that's useful. And also uh, let the user choose the, the, the choice of authentication mechanism. So, so you can have like a, a one sort of uh, authentication mechanism, but maybe with the OS2 or using uh, Google uh, logins for 
for for login and you can have another security uh, mechanisms for the the actual uh, method calls and also have support for multiple authentication mechanisms uh, and then uh, uh, continue the CDI ingra integration uh, have some roles allowed alternatives and uh, more support for the interceptors what else is coming in 10. We talked a little bit about Java SE versions and uh, LTS releases. And you saw earlier that I was running Glassfish and compiling everything with uh, 17. For, for 10, this is what we've decided. And that is that the, all the APIs and the source level, the language level that the, the API projects can use in their specification is limited to Java SE 11. So we will compile all APIs to Java SE 11. But the important thing, and that is that we are going to make the TCK run with Java SE 11 and above. In, in practice, that means we will make sure that the TCK runs with 11 and 17. And that means that you as app developers can use 17 features if you like in your applications. The, the, the only thing is the the uh, depends on whether your runtime supports 17 or not. So it's not limited to the APIs. They're compiled to, to Java S11. And, and that's probably a good thing because 17 just came out. And uh, we probably want to have a little bit of time playing around with what's actually good about it before we start incorporating it into the APIs, uh, which is something we have to live with for a very long time. For example, how are we going to use records uh, with uh, within the JSON serialization, and how is records going to work with persistence? So, so it's probably a good thing to figure out some best practices around records before we start using them and incorporating them into the APIs. But as as runtime, you can run on seventeen or newer, but we will make sure that the TCK runs on eleven and seventeen. And as you probably know, the Java SE Security Manager is deprecated in 7 and will be, probably be removed somewhere in the future. And uh, that kind of causes a little bit of problem, uh, problems or headaches for us because Java, e security, uh, Java SE Security Manager is heavily used in, in some of the specifications, especially the security ones. So we are currently uh, writing up some sort of statement that uh, or figuring out how we're going to do this in the future. Uh, are, are we going to, to provide our own version of the security manager or are we just going to remove it entirely? Or it also depends a little bit on how are uh, the actual deprecation being done by Java SE. So we're, we're talking to these people uh, and we will uh, uh, look at it closely. So, so we will make the, the path forward as sure, uh, secure as possible. The release cadence, we're kind of getting into a yearly thing now uh, by, by 8, 9, and, and 10. Uh, but uh, what we're looking at is, is, is maybe tie it up a little bit to the Java SE release cadence, at least have some strategy around it. And we were kind of concerned, since it's three years between the, the uh, Java SE uh, LTS releases, but now that Oracle announced that they want to do a two year cadence there, it kind of fits us better. So, so some sort of, um, of predictability around the uh, release cadence and tied up to the LTS thinking of Java SE, I think that makes sense. One of the things, uh, one of the running goals we have for 10, uh, that means that we don't have to finish it up uh, for 10, but uh, we, want to, we want to finish up it up uh, sometime, is that we want to decouple the TCKs. And this is kind of a technical thing that doesn't hit you as users that hard, but it's kind of a, a, an important thing for the vendors or the implementers of the technology. And um, what it means is, is we have this massive test suite to test, verify the platform, and it's it's kind of coupled together. So what do we want to do is to rip out some parts and, and have the different uh, project teams uh, take responsibility for it and then 
pull it in together when we want to uh, test the entire platform. And this has to be done in a in a, in a uh, secure and controlled way, so we don't lose anything of the backwards compatibility or any tests uh, that we're having there. So we're working on how to do it, and we have some projects that are doing it uh, partly now, and will continue working. So this will probably be something that will come up um, a long time in the future as well. So to sum up, we have uh, Jakarta E9 uh, or 901 is available. It lowered the entry barriers. It's a platform for innovation, and it makes the uh, migration fairly easy. The uh, namespace is going to happen, the, the change. It is happening. It's going to hit you whether you like it or not. If you're using Jakarta E or think you're not using it, you're probably going to see some uh, uh, user stories or uh, issues in your uh, issue trackers that you have to do the uh, next switch sooner or later. The Curry TAN platform, it's, it's shaping up. It will be uh, released in Q1 next year. And uh, more information is jakarta.e. If you take one thing from this talk, it's jakarta.e. That's all you need to know. That's uh, where you find all the information. You can find some blog uh, on Jakarta blogs and also do follow my weekly hashtag Jakarta uh, on my blog as well. So thank you very much.